Well, uh, congratulate Texas. I thought they had a really good plan and executed it really well in the, in the first half and uh, took us a while to uh, make our adjustments. But uh, um, proud of our guys, the resolve that we, we showed. Uh, I told the guys in, in the locker room after the game, uh, it's a team. We are a team of extremely high character guys, great leadership with, within that room uh, to give us a chance to have the football um, with under two minutes left to have a chance to tie it after how the first half went is a credit to our guys. Uh, all that being said, we didn't uh, play very well the first half, especially on defense. We uh, struggled to get stops. We couldn't tackle uh, Robinson. He's a terrific, terrific back. And then when we tried to put too many guys up there, uh, Worthy's a really good player. They, they, they have really talented guys, and so give them credit. They did some really good things with us to us in the first half. We made some good adjustments in the second half. Uh, and then uh, uh, I, I thought our offense played uh, really well. Um, we had a couple of chances in the first half. We probably needed a touchdown uh, rather than a field goal. And then we had the one fourth down that uh, was bang, bang in the end zone with Phillip that uh, uh, maybe we could have gotten a touchdown there that maybe would have helped us out and not be down so far in the first half. But I'm uh, proud of our guys. We've got a lot of football in front of us, a lot of story to write with this team. and. Uh, uh, we got to come back to work on Monday. Yeah, just what kind of hurt your defense in the first half when you gave up 31 points? Uh, we didn't uh, tackle very well, um, and they did some really nice things that you could tell that they prepped and planned for and did a good job. I think number zero made some good plays for them, the tight end. Um, you know, but we were able to slow them down in the second half. We just didn't get those stops in the first half. And then at the end of the game, you had two timeouts left. What was going to be we the We were trying to get one more playoff before we would get one because I didn't want to get in the situation we were last, last week where we ran out of time without any timeouts. We thought we could get one more playoff before we'd use a timeout. There was 36 seconds left. We'd just gotten a first down. We were going to throw a quick, quick pass. Um, and uh, I, I didn't see it all break down, but obviously it did break down. And then we'd have used it to get them going, but uh, um, I obviously didn't do that. That last full possession that you ended up with a field goal, a little time management issues there. It seemed like it got a little disorganized towards the end of that. Yeah, um, probably needed to get some plays called a little bit quicker. We had a personnel substitution issue. Um, Cade came out, Malik was out, trying to get that thing organized and, and squared away. That probably cost us a little bit of time. What exactly did you do differently in the second half that was effective against that Texas offense? Uh, we aligned a little bit differently to their unbalanced set. That's where they were hurt, really hurting us was their unbalanced set, and we aligned differently to it. Um, we were probably a little bit more aggressive uh, with our safeties, which, you know, they take shots, and um, they probably misfired on a couple of deep balls. Uh, I thought uh, we did a nice job of, of trying to stay on top of really fast guys, but we tackled better. Um, we kept playing. We stayed in the fight. I mean, that was something that I was proud of. Nobody wants to be down 31-10 at halftime, uh, but uh, our, our guys stayed in the fight, and it, it showed me a lot of character and resolve with those guys. At what point during the week did you decide Adrian was going to be your guy at quarterback? Um, we probably decided it collectively with, with CK and I on Friday. Um, we wanted to see how he responded. Um, each day, and uh, I thought uh, uh, he got a little bit better each day. And then after Thursday's practice, when we watched it on Friday morning, um, he showed us some things that we thought uh, um, he would be ready to go. And Deuce Vaughn, this is a couple games in a row now. He's been effective as a receiver, not just a rusher. Is that something you guys noticed when Will was in there throwing to him and you decided, hey, we should keep doing that? No, he's caught a lot of balls for, a lot of years, for all three years here, so it's not like – um, we forgot about him. We got a lot of other good players too. I mean, so um, yeah, it wasn't. It, we, he's always in the plan, uh, throwing the ball. Uh, whether or not I don't know how many catches he had. He had seven targets. Um, some people play softer against him, and some people try to double him. How much of an impact do you feel like the targeting and ejection on Brents on the first drive impacted your defense tonight? Well, obviously it impacts it uh, in the fact that we lose a, one of our best players in the in the first quarter. And uh, I thought Jacob Parrish came in and did a really nice job. But you, you lose a guy with you know close to 20 starts probably uh, and is an all-conference type player and uh, is a really good cover guy and is a really good tackler. So it, absolutely it had, it had an impact. But uh, I thought Jacob Parrish came in and did a really nice job.
what you say that that Adrian's turnovers both at the end of the first half and then at the end of the game is that is that just him trying to do too much there? Yeah, I think he made the wrong read probably in the end of the first half. Um, and uh, kid made a nice play, and I think he probably made the wrong read. Um, and then I, he's trying to make a play in the second one. And then going into halftime, was there anything specifically that was said about just trying to kind of rally the troops a little bit? No, just settle going? down and, and stay in the fight. And, and some of these plays that we weren't making in the first half, we're going to make in the second half. We've got a good football team. And um, you guys are smart enough. You guys know Texas is really talented and really good. They made the plays in the first half. Man, did they make plays in the first half. Uh, and in the second half, the script flipped a little bit. They had three points and 100 yards or something of offense, and we um, steadily moved the football. Um, and, yeah, it would have been nice to get the touchdown uh, on the drive before. I was glad Ty came in and banged the field goal to at least keep it within a one-possession game. But a nice spin to get a touchdown there, but we didn't. They, they, those guys made some good plays. Texas was 8 of 15 on third downs, and they got a bo bunch of those in the first half. Do you really like – think that was maybe the biggest story of that first half was yeah we we had a third and ten a, a third and eight um we just everything that could go wrong in that first half defensively probably did go wrong and probably a lot of self-inflicted things for us we just um got caught on our heels against a, a really good offense a good back good quarterback good receiver and um just uh couldn't get out of our own way and just uh, didn't make plays Coach, you guys talk a lot about not giving up big plays and winning the explosive plays battle. You gave up about 150 yards worth of explosive runs. What kind of goes into stopping B. John Robinson and the struggles yeah, you guys had you there? You got to tackle better. You know that's the bottom line, and you got to get a lot of hats on it. But I mean, everybody struggles to tackle that guy. Um, I was pleased with the defense of coming in and making some big time strips uh, downfield, uh, not giving up on plays. They they had a couple of explosive plays that we end up causing turnovers on. So. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of give and take, too. Coach Malik came out there in, in the second half, saw him back on the sidelines. Is it just kind of a rolled ankle? Uh, we, don't, we, we don't really know. I know it was is something that uh, was a factor, and that probably contributed to Fitz's question of us not quite, you know, we had to uh, get him replaced, and it probably, um, you know, threw us off a little bit as far as getting aligned and stuff. But he, they told me he was not able to come back. But I do not know the extent of it. Kind of what is the overall atmosphere in the locker room right now? Oh, they're down for sure. Um, they, sh you know, they got a bunch of kids that want to win and want to have a chance to play uh, in in December. Uh, and so, especially when we came back and had a chance to be successful, but. We've got great character in that room. We've got really good leaders. Uh, I let I, I said a few things and let uh, a couple of our our captains talk. And um, you know we've got to bounce back. It doesn't get any easier. We get to go to Baylor next week, and they're pretty dang good. Uh, so we've got to be able to um, own this. We made some mistakes as coaches, and we made some mistakes probably as players, and own it and learn from it and come back ready to go on Monday. You mentioned it a little in passing, but can you kind of go into detail on, on how big both of those strips and, and, and fumble recoveries were? Yeah, they, they were huge because, they, they, you know, they, they changed momentum for us. And uh, first one was Echo making a big-time play and stripping it from behind the Jacob. And then the other one was Josh Hayes that knocked the ball out. I mean, that's, that's just continuing to drive and finish plays and um, something that uh, our coaches and our players really emphasize. And then whether it was was big catches and and, and hurdling a guy or, or, or scooping up a, an Adrian fumble, yeah. What what would you like about what Ben Sennett did? Just play so hard, you know. But that that's everybody in that locker room. They they don't want to let each other down. Um, I appreciate the fact that these guys lay it on the line for each other, uh, and for the great crowd. The crowd was phenomenal tonight. Uh, I mean, our crowd came to life. They were dynamite. They stayed loud. Uh, wish we could have finished it for them. Yeah, Coach, after your other losses this season, you talked a little bit about how you guys are able to still control your destiny and all your goals are still in front of you. You might need a little bit of help in that area now. Can you describe yeah, what the I, message we've we got? We've just got to get ready for Baylor. I, I, yeah, I don't know if we need help. I don't, I don't know all that stuff. Man, this is about us um, suffering a loss and getting ready for the next opponent, which is a really good Baylor team. And that's the only thing we really can control. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys.